I'm fat. If I try to bend over and tie my shoes, I can't breathe. I'm like, <laughs> Welcome, every. Really? I can't even like get it out of my mouth. Free start. Stop Look laughing. Little, Look. That little <laughs> lint fluffy. Came. What lint fluffy? It came. Where's it's it at? Gone now. It fluffy. Down from the ceiling, and it like landed on your shoulders. <laughs> this is this is what I deal with, like trying to get this started. This is what I deal with. You gonna try it again? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Bob and Katie Show. I'm Katie, and I'm Bob. I got yelled at by a homeless man today. No, recently. What did you do to this homeless man? That's that's my question. Well, I didn't do anything, and to be. Well, you know, to be clear, I don't necessarily know that he was homeless. I'm damn sure he was crazy. Um, okay, I'll, let me let me tell you what happened. I was driving to work. This must have been I don't know eight o'clock in the morning, maybe. And I'm going through Little River, South Carolina, and I'm driving. There's two lanes, right? It's uh not two lanes. There's like two lanes on my side, two lanes on their side. Is that four lanes? What's it called? Uh, four lanes. Four lanes. Okay. Anyways, this guy darts out running from across the street. And runs in front of me. I have to slam on brakes. And like, I did a little skid. Oh my gosh. And he's standing in front of me. And let me paint the picture. Like he stopped in the middle of the road? He's like standing there? In my lane, looking at me. My heart's thumping, right? I bet that scared the crap out of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scared me. I'm about to die. I'm not trying to go to jail for vehicular manslaughter. He's um white guy. Probably 50 to 60 years old. His hair was not unlike Albert Einstein. Just just crazy gray all over the place. And there was a good 30 seconds where we just stared at each other. That's a long time to stare at someone. And then all of a sudden, he just yells at me, but not words. It was like, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, he got done yelling. And to be honest, I'm confused. You know, I, I don't know what's going on. I would have been terrified. Well, there was also a part of me that was like, I hope this guy's okay. So I grabbed the doorknob, you know, I throw the car in park. And I start to open the door. Were there really cars behind you? Oh, yeah. It, that doesn't matter, though. There, there's somebody in need. You know, he, he's in need. Well, I open the door and, you know, I just, I, I creak it open and the guy takes about five steps towards my car and starts yelling again. Well, I close the door back and I put the car in drive and I pulled over into the left lane and drove past him. Because at this point, I knew for a fact. No reasoning with this man. Yeah, I knew for a fact I was out of my, I was out of my territory. I was out of my comfort zone. Uh, he wasn't yelling for help. I don't know what he was yelling for. Obviously, what, you could not offer yeah, the type of whatever, assistance that this man needed. Whatever he needed, exactly. He couldn't get it for me. Now, I called 911. I told him where I was at and, you know, what was going on. And the lady goes, is, is the gentleman breathing? I was like, yeah, yeah, he, he was breathing. He was standing in the road yelling noises at me. And she said, can you ask him if he knows his name? I said, no, I left. I pulled away and she got mad at me. She said, you left him there? I said, yeah, he was, he was screaming. <laughs> what, what did they want you to do? I said, he was screaming and I'm going to be late for work. I got to go. I said, well, well, and then I got mad. <laughs> I said, why are you, why are you talking to me in this tone of voice? I'm calling you to let you know there's a problem. You could have just went on about your merry yeah, way. I'm not the ambulance. I didn't hit the guy. I did everything I feel like I could have in that situation to keep well, myself honestly, safe. Honestly, you don't know. You don't know how to what extent this guy was crazy. He, he you know, who knows if he had weapons or whatever. Who In this day and age, you don't know. Yeah, I'm not trying to end I'm up on the news. I'm glad that you... I mean, I'm glad that you tried. You, I think you did... What any good citizen would do to what, help the run, guy. Run away? <laughs> no. I mean, you tried to make sure that he was okay and that he was taken care of. But uh, it's like, come on, 911 operator lady. Yeah. I don't need you judging me. <laughs> I don't. I don't need to be judged by the lady sitting on the end of the phone line. I don't need that in my life. You know what else I don't need in my life? I don't need people to turn on the TV and be like, hey, local fat man eaten by a man on bath salts. I don't need that either. What? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I don't know what was going on with that guy. I don't know. I feel like I did everything I should have done. Yeah. He took steps towards my car. I left. Right? He was obviously not in his right mind. I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. 
what are you going to do? How, how are you supposed to reason with him? I mean, I, I watched the news that day. You know, I, I checked Facebook. I didn't see anything in the news, so I apparently didn't get too out of control. You think they sent somebody out like to check on it? Oh, I'm sure they did. I hope they did. But I left them my name and number and nobody ever called me, so I don't know. When we do the show, a lot of times when you come with something, it's about the kids because that's what you do. You're here all the time yep. with the kids. I come with like weird stories, things that happened outside because I go outside. You don't really go outside that often. I have contact with the outside world. You I do. have Facebook. Come you on. Do. Come on. I use the internet. But I'm going to change it up a little bit. I have baby stories that you don't know about. About our kids? About our kids. All right. Let me. I'm very curious to hear it. Well, Let me hear it. You remember that day you left me here alone with with the babies because that doesn't happen too often? Yeah, and, I went uh, grocery shopping? Yeah. No, no. I, I don't remember where you went. You were going for like half the day. I gave them a bath. Oh, I went and did wine and design. Well, when you got back, you asked me, you know, how was the day? Did everything go smooth? And I was like, yeah, everything went great. We had a great time. Was that time. a lie? No, it wasn't a lie. You but were lying I'm, through your teeth, weren't you? I may have left out a little information. Oh, my God. What did you do to our children? Nothing. Let me just tell you a little bit about bath time. I'm not putting both of them in the bath at the same time by myself because that's crazy. That's insane. <laughs> it's it's pretty much madness. So this is what I did. Both of them in the bath. Um. Well, for the people out there listening, we our kids have a bathroom in their bedroom. So it's like you go in the bedroom, and then there's another door, and there's a bathroom. So that's how it's laid out. Not too complicated. Well, I pulled their bedroom door shut, and I locked it. That way they couldn't get out. <laughs> they can only right? go so far. And then I took... <laughs> contain, confined. This, this was my plan. I'm going to have one baby in the bedroom, right? And sure. then I'm gonna Sounds open, like a good plan. I'm going to open the bathroom door, and I'm going to put the baby gate in the bathroom doorway. So one baby is contained to the bedroom... And one baby is with me contained <laughs> in the bed. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> because I'm with these kids 24 <laughs> seven. No, this plan, this even a, the best laid plans. No, You're this, like, this is going to be great. Oh, I didn't say it was going to be great. I said it was going to be efficient. This was, this is what's going to work. Things, if, if there's anything I've learned as a mom, it's that nothing ever goes according well, no, to plan. No, it went well. Okay. Almost the whole way until. <laughs> About the end. And it, it kind of went sideways just a little bit. Okay, so I washed Riley first. And I have Reagan in the in the bedroom. And she she did fine. She didn't scream. She, she played with toys. Oh, wow. She stood at the gate going, bath, bath, bath. <laughs> I don't think she understood why she wasn't there with him. <laughs> so I get I wash him. I get him out. And uh, we go into the bedroom with She's Reagan. Like, this is not how we do things. We take a bath at the same yeah. time. And uh, I don't have their clothes out yet. I just got the diapers. I lay him down. I dry him. I put a diaper on him. Dry his hair. And then I grab Reagan. I take her in there. And Riley's in here playing around. And he goes to the gate and he's staring at me. And then uh he disappears. <laughs> oh, God. And he's not making any noise. That's when it's bad. When the oh, when, a, yeah. when a child disappears and there's no noise, something's wrong. Well, he's not crying either. And I know there's nothing <laughs> crazy he can get into in their bedroom, so I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> you would think. Well, I get Reagan out. Right. And I walk over to the baby gate and I pop it instead of stepping over because, you know, we're, we're done. And I walk into the bedroom and he's standing over by the crib, butt naked. <laughs> he has no diaper on any longer. <laughs> so I said, I was like, Riley, where's your diaper at, buddy? <laughs> and he points. He said, diaper over by the, the, the door to the, to exit the room and the diaper's there. <laughs> and then right beside the diaper on the floor is a big wet spot. Probably about the size of a bowling ball. I said, no. <laughs> so this boy took his diaper off and, and, it, then peed and it peed on the floor. <laughs> so uh, I was like, oh, my God. I went and picked up the diaper. Guess what was in the diaper? Nothing. Completely <laughs> bone dry. So I lay him like, down. Well, Daddy, I wasn't trying to get my diaper wet. Yeah. I lay him down and I put his diaper back on him and I, you know, I dry her and put a diaper on her and I get their clothes <laughs> out. And... uh I start looking around and I see another wet spot. Oh my! So goodness. then I'm like, I gotta, I gotta search the room. I found three wet circles in that room. <laughs> oh my god! Where this boy took his diaper off and peed on the floor in three different spots. How so do then you I'm, like have that much pee? So then I'm like, oh God, Katie's never gonna leave me alone with these babies again. <laughs> she finds out I let them pee all over the room. <laughs> so I came in here and I got that green stuff. 
What is that stuff called? Mr. Clean. And I went in there and I like, I sprayed on a little bit and I, I soaked. I didn't do the rub. Right? You did good. I've, ta- I did the, I've taught you what I did you, the soaky thing. You blotted. You blotted. I did. I blotted. And then uh, I crossed my fingers and hoped you would never find out. Yeah. And, uh, and then I just t- told you. So, I mean, like, it's okay. It, you know, they didn't die. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, what do you want from me? In my book, that's, 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 that's a, a pretty it, good day. That's a win, huh? <laughs> if that's the worst <laughs> thing that happens, it's okay. At least it wouldn't poop. At least he didn't poop on the floor. Oh, God, that would have been miserable. We can't help it, can we? We can't have one episode <laughs> where we don't talk about poop. It's just such a part of our lives. Yeah, you brought it up this time. Mm. You got poop on your finger. Was it today? You came walking here, you're like, oh, my God, I just stuck my finger in poop. Oh, yeah, because I, I changed. Who was it? It was one. It was. I think it was the boy child. I changed him, and then I brought him in here and put him, you know, I'm putting him back in the room, and I went back. And the diaper was there with, you know, with the poop in it. Oh, like you didn't like roll it up yet? Yeah, I didn't. I was going back and I went to roll it up. And when I rolled it up, I don't know what happened to me. My brain just said, hey, stick. And like my <laughs> hand, my hand, you ever like try to move your hand and it kind of stutters <laughs> just a little bit. And I just went <laughs> and like my finger went right into it. I was like, oh, no. Oh. So now I'm trying to roll up the diaper and like I got my one finger up in the air because it's, you know, brown. <laughs> I had to go wash my hands, so that happened. <laughs> it happened. I don't really go a week without getting like a little bit of baby poop on my finger. Or my, I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Am I doing it wrong? Does this? Does this? No. You don't ever tell me it happens to you. Does I mean? You know, it happened to. I actually got some poop on my finger. Was it today? It might have been today. It wasn't very much. It was just I. I was changing Reagan. She, was, mm-hmm. she had poopy diaper and like somehow. She planked on you, didn't she? No, like somehow <laughs> whenever I like op- first opened it up, some got on my finger. I said, oh God, I grabbed the wipe and I was like, ugh, ugh. And I always wash my hands after I change a poopy diaper anyway. I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a habit I've always had. That's you know, like just, just in case. <laughs> Our last episode, we did the, um, what makes. <laughs> me angry thing yeah and we got a good response from that people seem to be fascinated by what makes you angry i guess or us angry i don't did we talk about something that made me angry i can't remember i don't know not, i mean like you i had i had my anger really well yeah I, I i do i had it well i i don't no no you do you well do. yeah yeah okay, well i got two things just two things that made me angry since the last episode that i can like think of uh the first thing is was that our trip to the zoo? No, but oh, that's the second thing. I was going to use that. As, thing. I was going to use that as a segue, and you broke me. You, you oh, took my thunder. I'm sorry. No, the first thing was I was driving to Bolivia, and uh, I was going to. I was working in another store. Oh, I was like, so I'm doing? driving right, and it's dark, and a dog is standing beside the road. <gasps> so you know, I slow down. I was like, oh, this dog is going to dart out in front of me. So I'm slowing down, and I get closer, and, and the dog's not moving. Like, he's real stiff, and I was like, he's fixing to jet. And then right as I get up on it, I realize it's one of them cutouts of a dog. Like, it's what? like it's like a piece of wood cut to look like a dog, and it's all black, and somebody like stuck it. statue of a dog? No, just like a thin, like, piece of plywood. You know, like, a lot of people put those things in their garden oh. where it's like a like a person bending over. Yeah, 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 I gotcha. Why would you do that? Like, people, at Halloween, you see, like, the... The, the cat. wooden cutout of a cat. Yeah, it's like that, but it was a dog. Can you tell me what, in it, like, wh- why would you do that? Maybe to make people slow down. Yeah, that's what it was. You think it was a clever technique to get people to slow down? I guess. There's really no other reason. They're I lucky I didn't. That you would put a card, or not card, a, a wooden cutout of a dog. I'm assuming it was by the edge of the road. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go back and run over it, but I was going to be late for work. Like, leave and I didn't, like, sorry I hit your dog. <laughs> I didn't have one issue where a homeless man made me be late for work. I wasn't going to let – because, I mean, eventually my boss is going to be like, look, these excuses you're giving us are adding up. <laughs> and then, yeah, the second thing was uh, the uh, gas station on the way to the zoo. I, oh, my goodness. I was <clears> – <throat> That was a whole ordeal, huh? When I walked out of that gas station, I was seeing red. So, I think we have to give some backstory here. All right. I'll let you do it. Okay. We'll back way, way, way up. Last weekend – we went to the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro, North Carolina. Oh, I just said North Carolina, so I was 
And if you guys didn't, redundant. It, it was a really good <laughs> zoo. And if you guys ever want to go, it's in North Carolina, in case you didn't know. North Carolina. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> anyway, the whole reason we were going, it was our nephew's second birthday. And we were, they were having his party there at the zoo. So, like, my entire family was going. You know, the four of us, my parents, my sister and her uh, her nephew, <laughs> her son, our nephew, and then my brother and his wife, their kids, and then they actually had a few extra. And all of us, we had to travel up there. Well, the four of us and my parents, my sister, and her son, we all went up the day before, stayed in a hotel. Because it's like a, about a three-hour drive. Mm-hmm. So, we, like, we meet up. We, we drive, like, we're like halfway there and my sister calls from the other car. She's like, we have to stop somewhere because Mason has to pee. Mason's our nephew. He's five. Five year old's got to pee. We got to find somewhere for the child to pee. Okay. So I was like, okay. We're kind of, we're out on open highway. I'm like, yeah, the next exit where there's somewhere that has a restroom, we'll go. Next exit. Sure enough, there was one thing. There was a Hardee's. So I was like. It was that big green sign. It only had one thing on it. It was just like blank. I think they're blue. I think they're oh, they blue? blue. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. It was a Hardee's. I was like, hey, that You know work. what? You know what? I have a picture of one right here that I took today <clears throat> of one of those signs. Is it green or is it blue? It's blue. It's blue. I took a picture of the, the purple clouds when we were coming out of Wilmington. So we take this exit and then, you know, and whatever, like. Everybody at home's like, what does this got to do with a gas station? Rest- <laughs> whatever <laughs> restaurants or gas stations, it'll, you know, you take the exit and there's a sign. And it'll say, oh, it's like 0.3 miles mm-hmm. this way or whatever. So we take the exit. And it's like, oh, the Hardee's is like 4.2 miles this way. Four miles off of the route. So you're talking about eight miles. Yeah. So get off the exit. My sister calls again from the other car. She's like, look, just find somewhere to pull over on the side of the road. He's a boy. Yeah, he's a boy. He's five. He's going to pee on the side of the road. Yeah, he can pee on the side of the road. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I find there's this little road, um, you know, it was like a dead end road, couple houses, but it was just a lot of open, like field and woods and stuff so we pull off on this road let me cut you off there for just one second i understand you're animated and when you talk you're shaking your legs and moving your arms about but could you not fondle my drink (laughs) when you're talking please like just leave my cup you have a cup you have a cup i was moving it over so i didn't knock it it over it is two feet away from you you shouldn't be knocking it over stop fondling my drink and tell the story so we pull over well you know he can't pee he can't do it. He can't do it. After a few minutes, you know, my dad comes walking up to our car and he's like, he can't go. Let's just get back on the road. I walk back to my mom's car and I'm like, you know, how, how are you guys doing? You all right? Because we've been on the road for over an hour at this point. Yeah, this is, this is a three and a half hour drive, I think. <clears throat> it, was like, it was like right at three, yeah. something like that. But, uh. Well, not when you start taking turns and parking on the side <laughs> of the road and trying yeah. to get five year olds. It's a three and a half hour drive. So I'm like, you know, you guys doing okay? And my mom, my sister says, we need to find somewhere to pee. We need to go. We're not peeing on the side of the road. So why didn't we just go to Hardy's? I said, well, there's a Hardy's just a few miles away. Oh, no. Just get back out on the road. Okay. Sure. I don't have to pee. Whatever y'all want to do. So we get back on the road. And as luck has it, the very next exit has a truck stop. And it's right off the exit. We can see it from the road. And we're back to the gas station. Okay. So now we're at the <laughs> gas station. Everyone's got to go pee. Mm-hmm. We all take their hands going and go and pee. And you were the last one out. And ye- all I knew was you stormed out of the door, yelling profanities. Um, Mason, our nephew, he was like, oh, like his eyes got really big. Like, what's wrong with Uncle Bob? You know, I was like, what happened? Well, this is what happened. Let me explain to you what happened. First of all, I had to poop. I know we're back to the poop thing again. It happens. <laughs> I this want you to tell stores. everybody that, if, like, that's you why you took so long. If you don't, but, took, it wasn't so long. Oh, I mean, why? You were, like, it the was last like one I out. wasn't, like, in the truck stop constipating or nothing. I just had to use the bathroom. <laughs> well, I was tired, and I wanted a Red Bull on the way, but I but I felt, you know, my tummy was like, blah, blah, blah. you know that noise? Like, you don't have to go to the bathroom, but it makes you, blah, 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 blah. It's coming. Yeah, it's I was coming like, well, soon. I, that's I your warning. Yeah, I can't have a Red Bull because I'm definitely going to have to stop somewhere. Well, I Caffeine used, will make you poop. Right, yeah. So I used the bathroom, and now I'm like, hey, I'm all clear. I can have a Red Bull. So I went and grabbed one, and I go stand in line. And that person is in front of me buying lottery tickets. <laughs> that you know, person. That person. And if you're one of those that people, person. I don't like you. 
you can buy a lottery ticket, but can you just buy the lottery ticket and get out? Why you got to stand there for 10 minutes talking, scratching numbers and like, hey, can you cash this one in? And let me go over here and I want to pick this one out. Well, I'm standing there and I got the red bull and I'm like, oh, and like I could see out the window and I could see your mom and your sister and they were staring at me. Cause I'm, cause like at this point, they're ready to go. My sister was out in the parking lot talking about, what's the hold up? Well, and I said, Bob had to poop. Well, this is what happens. The lady and there's two, there's two cash registers and the cashier and the lady all of a sudden move to another register. So I was like, Oh, maybe they were just over here trying to pick out the ticket. So I'll move with them to the other register. And now you're talking about really like a minute and a half, two minutes. Ribble's getting warm at this point. Okay. And they talk, and then they move back to the other register. And I was like, huh. okay, so let's go back. And so I, was there any acknowledgement? No, nothing, from- nothing. This cashier says nothing to me. Nothing. And that's like my first thing. I'm like, can you, like, what do you want me to do? You see that I'm back here pacing. I'm close to 300 pounds. I know you see me. I'm covering tattoos. I got big <laughs> holes in my ear. We're in the country. I don't fit in. I know you see me. So I walk back again, right? They do it again. They move to another register. Oh, my gosh. So I was like, okay, this is the last time I'm doing this. I'm, I'm mad at this point. Like, I'm already mad. So we move over, and then three other people walk up and stand at that other register. So now I'm like, what do we do now? Well, a second cashier comes up and opens that regi- register and starts ringing those people <gasps> up that just walked no. up. I'm pretty sure my eye twitched when this happened. I bet it did. I bet it did. So I grabbed the Red Bull and I open it and I laid it on the counter and I said, well, I was going to buy this, but apparently y'all don't want to ring me up. I'm leaving. And I start to walk out <laughs> and I think I blacked out at that point. And the next thing I know, I'm standing outside and you're going, there's kids around. There's kids around. And I look over at your mom and your sister in their car and they're just, their heads are thrown back. Ah, ha. They're laughing. They were laughing so hard they were crying. Like they could see you, and I guess they saw you going back and forth. And then you came out yelling, and yeah, they well, were laughing so hard. I got in the truck, and you were like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, let's just get out of here." You wouldn't even to tell me what happened. You were like, "Just get out on the just road, go, just, just go." go. Just and, go. Then, and then you said, "You said, well, do you want me to go in there and get your Red Bull?" I was like, "No, I don't want damn Red Bull. Just get. <laughs> let, we got to go. We we have to get out of here." And uh, that was my. I think that was the maddest. I was the whole trip. That was that was it. There's a good section that I don't even remember. I could have killed somebody, and <laughs> like the cops could knock on my door any minute. I'd be like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Oh my god! They're like, "Sir, we have you on video." Hmm. I don't know. Don't remember it. I think that might mean that like. You you need help with your anger. <laughs> no, I don't need help with my anger. I need a cashier to ring me up for a Red oh Bull God. when I want to buy one. That's what I need. Okay, that being said, why don't we take a quick minute to uh, tell you about our sponsors. Well, this is our last week with Millie and Cupcake. Cupcake's babies. If you guys haven't had a chance yet, swing on over to Author's Den or Barnes & Noble. Millie and Cupcake, for anybody who doesn't know, um, is a children's book. It sounds super cute. But it's about uh, it's a little girl and her pet rat. But it's not like, like a gross rat. It's like, you know, like a, a cute rat. A cute rat. Sure. You know, you know, no diseases or anything like that. Um, I think I brought this up before. Think of like Ratatouille. It's not meant to be scary. Yeah. Like, like Mickey Mouse. You know, it's a cute kitty rat. Kitty rat. <laughs> but it's uh, by Mildred Potish. And uh, you can pick it up at Barnes & Noble or like I said, the author's den. And uh, the the artwork once again, I'll show it to you. It, it looks, looks yeah, adorable. It looks great. But uh, I think it's only it's only like ten bucks, which that's that's really good for a kids book nowadays. Mm-hmm. Kids book prices are getting out of control. You can go pick up a book that has eight words in it, and it will cost you eight dollars. Yeah. yeah, eight words. It's ridiculous. The boy went to school. He made friends. The end. And it's like twenty dollars. <laughs> like I feel like that we should get into making books. That's what we should do. One sentence, eighteen dollars. You sell to a million people. You're set. But uh, this book actually has some words. It's got a good storyline, and it teaches kids about friendships and pets, and you know all kinds of wonderful things. So get on over to the author's den or Barnes and Noble and pick it up. Million Cupcake Cupcakes Babies. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about is OneSavvySis.com. You check that one out, right? Did you like that? I did. I did. Is this a really cool website? They have um. A lot of stuff you would 
like buy for gifts. A lot right. of a lot of awesome gift ideas. Um, they do this thing where they can put handwriting on jewelry, like bracelets and stuff. So mm-hmm. like you know, like if your kid writes, you know, like I love you, mommy, you can get it put on like a bracelet and it's in their actual handwriting. It's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And they have lots of other gifts things other than that. I'm definitely doing that for you for one Mother's Day once they can write. I would love that. That would be so awesome. Such a great idea. One of the things I saw in there that I thought was really cool. Mm -hmm. Here it goes. It's socks. They're called Haffy Cats. Like half, you know, Mm -hmm. H-A-L-F-Y. Haffy Cats. And it's like a pair of socks. And like, I know the the one in the picture, it's got a picture of a cat. And like half of it is on one sock, half of it's other. So Yeah, so when you put your legs together, whole cat. It's a whole cat. Then it'll be a holy catty. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Haffy Cat. And it comes in all different sizes. And Can you say that again? Haffy. Haffy Cat? Haffy Cat. But I know on their, I'm quoting their website, it says, not a fan of cats? No worries. We will Haffy any animal you wish, even your own. So you can get like your hamster yeah. on these Haffy socks. So um, let's just be clear real quick because you spent a lot of information. This is, this, to sum it up, you can take a picture of your pet be it a cat, dog, warthog, whatever kind you of You might weird, have a pet rat. Yeah, whatever, yeah, like pet cupcake. rat. Millie, okay. yeah, or cupcake. That, yeah, cupcake, right. You take a picture of cupcake and, and you, you send it to them. Halfy socks. And now you got cupcake socks. Yeah. It says we can even make custom cartoon. We can even make a custom cartoon cat from your pet cat's real image. Boom. So I'm like, I... I and everybody should have a pair of these. But you can get like um it says um they can do like mascots and things like that. Mm-hmm. So not not just your pet. That is so cool. That's right. So forget cat in the hat. You can head on over to onesavvysis.com and get cat on your socks. And if you use the code 10%, we'll give you 10% off. Sorry. They uh, this like said this is all on their website. I'm just quoting it. Um they can do like mascot socks for like your team Mm -hmm. like you know it says softball like softball team is the example you get your mascot on your socks if you have a picture of pizza i'm pretty sure it'll put on them socks for you so one savvy sis.com we got one more and this one i'm pretty i'm pretty uh interested in this is the game this is the game there is uh, a couple guys and they've invented a new board game and when i first like when i read what they did, I was like, oh, okay. You know, a couple guys think they're going to make millionaire, be millionaires, invent this game. And then I went to the Facebook page to check it out, and it's crazy. Like, it's detailed. You showed me the picture it's of it. Insane. It's insane. It looks intense. It looks, it looks pretty awesome. So this game, you can have up to six players, and what you do is you actually have this, like, uh, hexagonal board each player does, and it's outer space. And you have your own planets, and the object of the game is to build up an alien race and take over the other people's areas. So it could just be me and you. We hook our two hexagonal pieces up together and battle it out. But uh, you have different ways that you can, like, rank up your aliens and make them super powerful. You know, I don't know a whole lot about the game because it hasn't been released yet. But yeah, we haven't had to, like, play it or anything. But everything that I'm reading, it sounds like it's, it's pretty <laughs> intense. So are you going to be the good alien race or the evil one that goes around probing everybody? I'm asking you that. Are you going to be the prober? Probably not. Probably not? You're going to be know, nice I'd aliens? probably be nice. Well, I'm going to be cutthroat when we get this game. I'm I know. Take you I out. hate playing games with you. You're vicious. So go over to uh, Facebook. You go to facebook.com slash earthos board game. And that's E-A-T-H-O-S. I spelled earth wrong. Yeah, you did. I'm going to get fired. We're going to get fired. We're going to lose the sponsor. There's an R in there. Mm-mm-mm. Earthos. E A R. T H O S board game and check it out. And uh, I shared their page already on my page. So if you're friends with me, you can go check it out there too. And we'll post it on our Facebook in May. They're doing an actual Kickstarter to raise the money to put it out. And if you've never done Kickstarter before, most of the time what happens is they go, you know, donate some money, be a part of this project. You get something. And yeah. In and in return. return, you get something. So I'm sure if you donate a certain amount of money, That'll be like you purchasing this game up front. Mm-hmm. So go check it out. It looks like it's going to be really fun. And it's not like I'm going to be real with you. When I first read it, it sounded like I thought 
It's a couple guys just goofing around. But when you go and check it out, it looks amazing. Legit. Yeah, it's legit. Well, this is a chance for people to really be on board and be a part of something that yeah. sounds like it has very much potential I to think be successful. It, I think it's going to explode. Uh, you can be like, I helped them to promote their game. He's going to put us on the Kickstarter page as supporters. And if you guys go and check it out and every, there's a big response, maybe we can uh, have a little thank you note on the box. Thank you, you to the Bob and Katie show for making this possible. Okay, CEO of Earthos. A little, little thank you note on the bottom of the box that ships out to a million people because we know you're going to sell a million games. But uh, good job, guys, and I hope it works out well for you. But that Kickstarter is going to start in May. Go do what you can. And then there's also the good old Patreon.com. We got a new supporter this week, Robert. Thanks a lot, bud. We appreciate everything you do for yeah, supporting the you. show. And uh, our episode's going to be released tomorrow for our patrons. I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, my goodness. And then we got our vinyl today, too. It. Yeah, new stickers. New stickers. And all of our patrons are going to get them. And uh, everybody else, if we see you, you can have one. Uh, if you need us to ship Big you one. Big shout out to Kurt Elkins for hooking us up. You're right. Thank you he for that. He has the machine to make vi- the vinyl stickers. And, yeah, he That's helps pretty us. amazing. He's a great tattoo artist. So his stuff's really, really good. If you would like one of these stickers, and I know we've got a bunch of listeners in uh, across the water. What's the place called? We have all those listeners at? Oh, my gosh. They're, they're all leaving right now. England. England. Let's go with England. If you want one of these stickers, just private message me and we'll I'll charge you shipping. I don't know how much it costs to ship a sticker, but we're not trying to like make money off Probably of it. Probably not much. But I don't want to go broke either. But we'll hook you up. If you want us to ship you one, just get up with us and we'll throw in an envelope and send it that way. So, highlights from the zoo. What do you want to talk about? Oh, I don't know. You saw the big polar bears. That was my most favorite part of the entire zoo trip was seeing the polar bears. When they walked by the glass, I, you were focused on them. I was looking down at the babies because I'm going to be honest with you. The zoo, uh, it's it's okay for me. My favorite part was watching them, the babies. When that bear walked across the glass, Riley's eyes got humongous. And Reagan just goes, kitty? <laughs> <laughs> like it, was, it was amazing. She's learned how to say, she says, Ki kitty, Ki kitty. And everything is a kitty. And kitty. every animal yeah. is a kitty right every now. Every animal. And I knew, I knew, I told you, I called it. I said, when we go to the zoo, every animal she sees, it, it's going to be kitty. Mm-hmm. There were thousands of people. It was so busy that day. Busy, oh my busy, gosh. Busy. Crowded. We go to see, what were we going to see? The monkeys, mm-hmm. the gorillas. We were going to see the gorillas. And there was, I mean, it's a huge zoo. The gorilla exhibit is huge. There's multiple places to view them. And there was like people lined up to get up to where you could see. It was madness. You know, I think I went to the Ashboro Zoo when I was younger, but I really don't remember it. This zoo is so big, they have trains. Or not like trains. They call them trams. That you take from one section of the zoo to the other. Well, I didn't know we were going to be taking these things. And we take the kids... And we've got the big stroller. It's super long, two stroller. We've got, you know, snacks and bags and just all kinds of stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, we have two children in a double stroller. We have a diaper bag. I have my purse. I had my camera bag. We yeah. had a bag. Um, uh, we have like a cooler. It's like a little cool. It's like a lunch bag, mm-hmm. but it's like you freeze it. And so it keeps things cool and that we have like their juice and water and stuff in. And then we had another bag with like snacks and stuff. Oh, and then we had a gift for the first part of the day. We're looking. Oh around yeah, that's right. I forgot about the gift gift for, for the birthday party, the birthday party and a lot of stuff. And when you go to get on the tram, they're like, Hey, fold up that, you know, take your kids out of the, the stroller, <laughs> fold it up. And stick all your stuff back here. So that's a good two minute process. And, and two minutes doesn't sound like a long time until there's 40 people waiting on you so we can get this tram moving. And then we had to do this like what, two or three times? We rode it. I think we rode it twice. I know. I'm just sitting there like, what was it three miles away? I'm just going to walk it. I just wanted to walk it. I didn't want to unpack and repack and pack it up again. And, and then you hold the kids in your lap. Why you're on this vehicle with no doors? <laughs> I was like, they might have been safer if I left them in the stroller and just parked them up there and put <laughs> well, the brakes we'll on. Put the brake on, it'll be fine. At least they have seat belts <laughs> in the strollers. And then uh, we get to the little party, 
and they they provided the cake. The zoo did, and they got his uh, year wrong. His <laughs> birthday. It said, it said happy fifth birthday, Jacob. Well, he was turning two. Yeah, he was like two. He's like, oh, that's the wrong number. Now, one cool thing they had was they had the big plastic tables. You know, like the long rectangular like tables. tables. And then they had this like roll of brown paper. Roll, what is that called? Brown paper. It's almost like the roll you see at the doctor's office on the chair. It was like the, it was like this same paper as like a brown paper bag. Yeah. But it was in a roll. And there were crayons everywhere. It's a roll. So I immediately sat down and was like, I'm going to draw. And I think I went off into my own little world for about 20 minutes. Yeah, you minutes. did. Everybody else is at the birthday party. It was, it was pretty cool. It was a dinosaur themed mm-hmm. party. Um, if anybody lives where you're able to have your kid's birthday party at the Ashboro Zoo, it was awesome. It was. It was, it was really awesome. Um, but yeah, it was a dinosaur themed party. So like the hostess, she came in and she's like, she's got like fossils and mm-hmm. things like that for the kids to touch. And she's telling them about different dinosaurs. And it was, it was really cool. She was almost a fossil. That, that hostess was That's the most nice. Was, that is she was not a, nice. She was a good 70 years old. No, she was that not. That lady was old, but she was, she was happy. Yeah, yes, she was. And she was moving around. So good for her. Bless and then her she brought, heart. They brought out a turtle at the end. And I like, didn't even see the turtle. The kids got to really touch it. And mm-hmm. It was it was really cool. But yeah, I was a grown man just sitting there at the table coloring. But uh, don't be hating. My dinosaur looked good. It did. You did a good job. I ripped it off and took it with me. I was I was in there tearing the paper off the table. I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this dinosaur home. What about this hotel we stayed in? Let's talk about that. We're not gonna talk about the zoo. You wanna talk about the zoo some more? Let's talk about the zoo. See, here's the thing. There were 17 people in our group, most of which were. My blood relatives. Mm-hmm. We have anger issues. I ain't trying to hide it. Everybody, and- everybody in my family, we got tempers, anger. So you get a whole group of people that are just angry, mm-hmm. and you get them all together in a very- Walk them around the zoo with a thousand people. <laughs> this like miles and miles and miles of walking. And there were how many- out of the 17 people in our group, eight of them were children. Yeah. Most of them being toddlers. There was a 12-year-old, 8-year-old, 5-year-old, 3-year-old, 3-year-old, 2-year-old, and then our two one-and-a-half-year-olds. Kids. There were kids. So, lots of small children. You, That's a recipe for a disaster in and of itself. I was walking with my mom at one point, and she was like, are you Okay. And I, with a smile on my face, I was like, no, I'm not. I was like, I'm angry. I was like, this sucks. My sister's like running over everybody with her. She had a jogging stroller and she ran into me like five times. Mm-hmm. She ran into my mom countless times. She ran into you. She ran into every, she was just like, burr, burr. she wasn't just, jogging. She was just walking no, with yeah, a brisk pace. It was just crowded and, she, yeah. and nobody was walking fast enough for her. I, I love my sister. I love her to death. Well, now, like, I, I hit two or three people with our stroller, <laughs> but it was on purpose. Like, cause we're, I mean, like, this is what happens. See, people have no mercy for people walking w- with a stroller mm-hmm. with kids. Like, people will just get in your, like, they don't, there, there's no courtesy there. No, none. Well, this guy walks past me and he gets really close and you could just tell he's like, ah, 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 ah. he's kind of, he's, it almost looks like he's kind of aggravated. Because we're no. we're in a big group and we're you know we're walking kind of slow. It it didn't have anything to do with like the thousands of people. And then he cuts in front of me and slows down. So I said boom, and I just tapped his heels with the <laughs> with the thing, and I go, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. And then I think it happened like two or three more times, like people mm-hmm. like walking in front of me, and I could slow down. And if if somebody like I'm, I'm it, I wasn't just terrible. I wasn't like marching around the zoo hitting people with a stroller. That's not what's going <laughs> sure. on. Sure, it was rude people, rude people that would step in front of me. I I've I had just wouldn't stop. I would just keep going. Boom. And like our stroller, but it's a double stroller. It is. It's like a it's Cadillac. It's long. It's Mona got that for us. Thanks, Mona. It's fantastic. We love it, but. You know, you're walking in a crowded place, and yet somebody who is just has nothing but themselves just walk, and people will cut in front of you and like just stop in front of you, and like like they don't see you. I don't. I, I've had a lot of experiences with people being really rude mm-hmm. and like not wanting to let me by, and 
I'm just like, come on, you see me with this huge long stroller, cut me some slack. Start bumping them like I did. They'll get out of the way. What are they going to do? Attack a stroller with two twin babies in it? That's not happening. I felt confident. Better not happen. I do it one time, all of a sudden, somebody turns around and starts yelling at me. Ah! Like that guy down the little river. Like, oh, I would have messed up. I had to lead the babies here and call 911. <laughs> yes. Somebody would have been calling 911 on you. I don't know what was wrong with that guy. He just, he was yelling. Uh, I don't know. What was his name? I don't know. I left. <laughs> so what else? I don't know. I liked seeing the animals. It was nice. We saw a giraffe and an elephant. We saw a bunch of elephants. We saw a bunch of giraffes. There was like yeah. four giraffes. There's some ostriches. Were there ostriches? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it ostriches or is it ostri like cactuses? I have, I really don't like if know. You, if there's I have one, no if idea. you're like, hey, there's a cactus, but if there's like a group, you go, there's cacti. Yeah. Or, is it ostri? <laughs> I don't Probably know. Not, right? I have no idea. All I've right. never been in this situation where I was talking about multiple. Multiple ostriches? Ostriches. I don't know. I'm pretty sure the one was like dancing though. They had like music. He was. It was nearby. Mm-hmm. It was in, there's a section of the zoo called Africa and has animals from Africa. They had, um, people. I didn't put that together until just now. What, like the music? Yeah, the music was like music from Africa. Yeah, like the different drums and stuff like that. It was really awesome. And it was right near the exhibit where the ostriches and the zebras and the ostrich. The ostrich, whatever. I'm making that up. Everybody start using that ostri when you're talking about multiple. If you get in a conversation with multiple ostriches, ostri. Just in case. You never know when you might encounter a situation. But he was like, like you could hear the music, right? And we're like, oh, look at them. They're pretty cool. And he's like, he's like bobbing his head like, I can dig it. I can dig it. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was. He was picking was, his knees up. I was like a child. I'm like, oh my God, look at him. He's dancing. <laughs> I was like slapping you on the shoulder. I was like, do you see that? I get really excited. I love the zoo. Mm -hmm. You love animals. I do. So naturally, I love the zoo. We would have a zoo if I let you. Probably. Yeah. So, you know, pretty much sums up the day. We didn't get to see the whole zoo because, you know, lots of small children and angry adults. And, um, you know, that's just was life. Yeah. What are you going to do? Buy some crap from the gift shop and go back to the hotel. (laughs) Can we talk about the hotel now? Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about the hotel. Well, see, all right, here's the story about the hotel. I went on a business trip with my company and we had to stay at a hotel and they were running a promotion where you, if you stayed two nights, you get one free and I stayed two nights. So now I've got a free hotel room on the books. So it's we Marriott, start, the Marriott, yeah, the Marriott. so we start trying to find a hotel in Asheboro and they're all booked up. Every hotel in Asheboro no is booked rooms. up. No room at the end. So I call one of the hotels and I'm like, we got to figure out what's going on. Cause now I'm like, I don't think we should go. I was like, is this accurate? How yeah. is there no rooms? Yeah. Cause we're checking it online. Well, I called a hotel and I told him the date and I was like, can you tell me what's going on? And the lady gets excited. She's like, Oh yeah, I can tell you exactly what's going on. They're having a furniture convention. And I was like, a f- furniture? You're telling me every hotel in Ashboro is booked up because of a furniture convention? She goes, it's not just a furniture convention. It's the it's furniture the convention. Furniture and convention. she's excited. And I'm just like, you work at a hotel. You need to calm down. But I'm intrigued. So I was like, tell me about this furniture convention. What, what What's going on? And apparently there's a place called High Point, North Carolina. Hi, yeah, High Point is right near Asheboro. And High Point is like the furniture capital of the country. Yeah, or I didn't know that. Maybe the world. I don't know. I that didn't might know be a this, stretch. This sort of thing existed. But yeah, apparently. Lots of furniture made in High Point. One weekend a year, which happens to be the same weekend that we booked to go to the zoo, they do this convention for furniture. All the hotels booked up. People are renting out their houses. I found that out too. Like there's tons of people that leave for the week and rent out their house because they can make tons of money. So then you start trying to find hotels away from Asheboro and we end up finding this place in Bisco. Mm-hmm. It's like 20 miles away. It wasn't that bad. It was like less than half an hour away from the zoo. Well, this is the picture. We don't see the hotel at first. Because it's uh, it's like back way off the road. Yeah, we're using the GPS, and you know they're like, you have arrived at your destination, and we turn in. It's like this big empty. There's like a strip mall, you know. There's like a strip. Yeah, it's and a- the parking lot is huge, and it's empty. And over to the side, there's a Just Dollar so you, General. So you can understand what it looks like. The parking lot we pulled into was a food lion that had been closed down. 
So it's like a, a just just in an abandoned food lion. And then there's a brand new Dollar General over here to the right. And then back in the corner is this little tiny hotel, Days Inn, motel, whatever you call it. It wasn't tiny. It was average. Yeah, it was, I guess it was average. Sized. And uh, to be honest with you, it was sketchy at best. It was dark. It was in, a, in this corner back behind yeah. a Dollar General. It was, it, like I said, sketchy at best. And as soon as we pulled in, like, I thought at first, I was like, this hotel doesn't exist. I did, we didn't yeah, see we it. we couldn't even see it. And I was like, oh, no. By this time, it was like almost 8 o'clock at night whenever we got there. Mm-hmm. Like, we got the kids, and I'm like, this hotel doesn't exist. We're going to have to turn around and go back home. What are we going to do? And we see it back in the back corner, and I'm like, huh. There it is. What, what kind of hotels? Like, in the back of this corner of this empty parking lot. <laughs> so just a few highlights from the hotel stay. The first thing was about 30 minutes after we got there, we noticed that our children's feet turned black. Oh, the carpet was disgusting. Yeah. Just from them walking around on the carpet, their feet was turning black. It was the most disgusting thing ever. Yeah. We had to wash off their feet before we put them to bed that yeah. night because their feet were completely black. The toilet. Let me tell you about this toilet. It was one of the long toilets. Like, it's like it, it was the oval shaped toilet. Yeah. But it had a round <laughs> like it toilet shaped <laughs> toilet seat on it. When you put the toilet seat down, there was like part of the toilet sticking like a out. Gap. Because the toilet seat didn't fit. Who who has a toilet in a hotel that the seat doesn't fit it? It's crazy, right? And then our beautiful kids. Who when it came to bedtime, they weren't having it. Anybody who's ever had small children and stayed in a hotel, you've you've probably had issues. Our kids are like, what? We're not home. We're not supposed to go to sleep. What? And we had the pack and play yeah. for them to sleep in. And we didn't even put them in at first. We tried. We're like, okay, well, let's just see if they'll sleep in the bed with us. Nope. Our children have never, ever once in their entire lives slept in the bed with yeah, us. Yeah, they don't sleep so in the bed So they're like, what? No. We we take them in the bed sometimes. And when we do, we're just like, we're reading stories and, and talking and stuff. So when we put the kids in the bed with us, they go, oh, it's playtime. Yeah. So that was fun. They said it's like one o'clock both nights. It was definitely a point the first night where I was like, I surrender. I give, I, yeah. I, I just, I, we're not going to sleep tonight. The second night, I didn't even want to go back to the hotel. I just wanted to drive home. And then there was one point, I think you were, you were in the shower maybe. And I'm, I'm sitting on the edge of the bed and I'm like, it's freaking hot in here. <laughs> oh God. I was like, I think the air conditioner is broke. So I get mad. Because I'm already like, the carpet's dirty, the toilet seat don't fit the toilet. I'm angry. And I walk over to this air conditioner, and I'm prepared to kick it. We're going to make this thing work. And I look down, and somebody, not you, I'm assuming it's one of these little kids. I want to say it was the boy child, because he kept running over there to it. Oh, my gosh. He discovered it as soon as we got It was one of the units. That's you know, like that's, under the window? Yeah. it's um, And it, it was within his reach. And he was like, oh, buttons. And he pushed those buttons every chance he every got. Every chance he got. He air conditioned up, down, off, auto. Yeah. Well, he went over there and turned the heater on and changed the temperature to, to hellfire and brimstone. I walked over there and looked at it. It said 90 degrees. <laughs> oh, my Who God. even makes a heater that goes up to 90 degrees? What is the purpose of our, that? Our, in, in our car, it goes up to 90. Who? Why? Who wants to be at 90 degrees? I don't know. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. In a nutshell, that was, uh, that was our experience, our first family experience in the hotel. Yeah, that was our first time ever. And going to the zoo. Yeah, staying in a hotel with our kids and uh, not exactly, you know, chomping at the bit trying to do it again <laughs> anytime soon. Well, we got, um, two questions from Facebook we need to answer real quick before we get out of here. You cool with that? The first one is from your bestie, Megan. She says, since you guys are now watching Pokemon, who is your favorite? Caden is super into Charizard and Kylie likes anything cute. Also, do you prefer the old group with Ash or the new one? Well, my favorite Pokemon is Pikachu just because that was the main character when I was growing up and I've always liked him. My favorite Pokemon as of right now is Charmander, which Charizard uh, he evolves from Charmeleon, which mm-hmm. evolves from Charmander. Look at you with the Pokemon knowledge. <laughs> I got that knowledge. Um, but yeah, Charmander, he's, I don't know, I think he's really, he's really cute. Like, I mean, he's adorable. And mm-hmm. then he's just like, Char! 
fire and it's like flames come out of his mouth and Charmander. he's like he's bad a man yeah bad a yeah okay keeping it i'm keeping it like pg okay as for the old series versus the new one we haven't watched a lot of the new one but i can already tell you that katie doesn't like it she's not fond no. of it it's different uh, yeah i think this is just different i'm just used to the ori- which now ash is still in the one where we're still on indigo mm-hmm the in- Indigo League is that what? Yes, that's what's called. We got one more season. Um, so I mean, yeah, we're still watching the ones with Ash, but I don't know, like their original. It's weird because the new ones is just so different. But like I said, we're still with the ones with Ash. Well, there you go. I bet it's gonna be really weird whenever we get to the ones the yeah, Ash isn't in. Rebecca wants to know if we have any plans for Free Comic Book Day. We don't. Not I no. I want to go, but sometimes we just have to pick our battles in life. And I don't know that that's one of them. Well, we did we did a live show last year for Free Comic Book Day. And yeah. we had, oh my gosh. A blast. We, we had an incredible time that day. It was so mm-hmm. much fun. But yeah, we haven't made any plans this year. We've just, we've been really, really busy. Like, I mean, gosh, we haven't even put out a podcast in like a few weeks. We've yeah. just been so busy. And anything that involves us leaving our house, we're like the point we're at now, like our kids... They're 19 months old, 19 month old twins. And like, you're trying to leave the house. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult. And I know there's not many people out there that can fully grasp just how difficult it is unless you've come and lived a day at our house. (laughs) But yeah, like we got up. What time did we get up this morning? 830. We got up at 830, started getting ready to leave. Mm -hmm. We left our house at 230 PM. 230. Yeah. What are you going to do? That's our life. Eh. That's our life. So, yeah, no, as of right now, we have no plans for Free Comic Book Day, but that may change. What are your plans? My plans? No. What are Re- oh, I was Rebecca. Talking about Rebecca. Okay, Rebecca, hit us up. Tell us what your plans are. What are your Give plans me, for Free Comic Book Day? Give us any hear tips and your tricks. Plans. Uh, you got anything else? I do. What is it? I have a question I've been dying to ask you. Me? Something I was thinking of the other day. It's like, okay, we've been married almost nine years. We yeah. will be celebrating our nine-year anniversary in less than two months. Yeah, nine years. And Ooh. we we've known each other over half of our lifetimes. We've been together for what almost twelve years. I know, like we know. I don't want to say everything. I feel like I'm getting set up right now. But I know, like we know so much about each other. Yeah, until you start making me nervous and asking me questions. I. Was, I'm not good at this. No, I was making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich the other day, mm-hmm. and I don't know about everybody else, but I always put the peanut butter on the same side and the jelly on, like, the peanut, I always put the peanut butter on, like, okay, you have your bread, you're making peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I always put the peanut butter on the left side and the jelly on the right. Don't switch it up, because it won't feel right. Okay. And I have no idea what side you put your peanut butter on. Do you put your peanut butter on the same side every time? I put it on the bread. Do you switch it up? What are you talking about right now? Like when you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you have your bread, it's out in front of you, your two slices of bread. Do you like always have to put the peanut butter on the same side? No. Do you just willy nilly whatever side you feel like putting it on? Willy nilly. We're making a sandwich. I pick, all right, this is what I do. I grab a piece of bread and I put some peanut butter on it. I do go peanut butter first. (laughs) I do too, yeah. I peanut put, butter is always first, and peanut butter is on the left. I put the bread down. Then I grab another piece of bread, and I put jelly on it. And then I pick the peanut butter up, and I flip it over because the peanut butter is not going to fall off. Oh, see, I always put my je- I always put the jelly side on on top. Oh, that's because you're doing it wrong. Mm-mm-mm. That is not a polite finger. <laughs> I don't need that in my life right now. Well, I I it dawned on me that's like one of the few things I was like I don't know this. I'm going to ask you. Also. And I, I should know this, but I'm, I don't know. I don't. How many people, like, cut the podcast off because we spent two minutes talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? <laughs> no, I think that other people are sitting there going, yeah, yeah. I get, there's people out there who be like, yeah, I always put my peanut butter on the same side every time. Or it, just, it doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. Do you, I when, think we're all getting a glimpse into into the crazy that is Katie. I, like, yeah, <laughs> like, this probably. is the thing she, she thinks about. It is. And I've been thinking about it for days. It must be hell inside your head. It is. It's rough. Whenever I have another question. Whenever you put on your shoes, your socks and your shoes, do you go sock shoe, sock shoe? Yeah. Or do you, 
Or you don't do sock, sock, shoe, shoe. No, I'm lazy. If I'm going to... Like, it's you like, I'm sock, fat. Shoe, sock, shoe. So I'm fat, so I got to pull my leg up onto my other leg. So that's already like... <clears throat> so I put a sock on, and while that foot's up there, I'll go ahead and put a shoe on it, too. That's why I, I do sock, shoe, okay. sock, shoe. But I, I switch because... Most of my life, I always did sock, sock, shoe, shoe. And at some point, this is probably like before we got married, like late teens, early 20s, just mm-hmm. one day, I just started doing it different. And I, it, like, you know, it's one of those small things where like, you do it differently one day and you're like, huh, it's, a, it's, it's not, different. I'm not wasting all this time switching legs eight times when I put my shoes on. Well, I think part of it too is I gained weight. And like you said, like, <laughs> Well, you know, while it's while this foot is up here, you know, might as well go ahead and just get it all over with. That's why the, that the whole fat thing. That's why I tie my shoes and leave them tied. If I got a tennis shoe, I don't tie tennis shoes. I just I, I use like you know my foot to pull the shoe off, mm-hmm. and I just leave it tied and I slide it back on like it's flippers or something. I don't <laughs> it's flippers. <laughs> See, look, if I'm fat. If I try to bend over and tie my shoes, I can't breathe. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> You know, my guts, like, I got to, like, spread my legs so my stomach can go down a little bit. Because if, if it goes down <laughs> oh on my, my leg, I, I just can't breathe. So, yeah, I keep my, I keep my shoes tied. I That's why I like wearing boots. Because you can't do that with boots. Oh, yeah. You know, like, Timberlands or something. You got you to be untying them things. Mm-hmm. Tie them back up. Lace them back up. But I, I feel like I know more about you now. All right. Now I learned something. Nine years. Here we come. See, we're, st- we're still discovering each other. Got uh, to keep the spark somehow. I uh, like we were talking about earlier. If you'd like access to the secret episode, make sure you go over to patreon.com, share your support. You can pledge one dollar a month to help out the Bob and Katie show, or and, more if you or more, yeah, feel so inclined. It's uh, unlimited amounts, whatever you know, whatever you're good with that won't put you under. And uh, it's a monthly donation. So if you say a dollar, then at the beginning of the month, every month, you know, a dollar goes in, and you can you can stop it at any time. Yeah, any time. No, you can't. Once you do it, you're trapped forever. 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 Anything else? That's it. I think I have something else to talk about, but I don't remember. Uh, maybe next time. I'll remember it next time. Next week. For maybe. real. Next week. No more skipping weeks. We're doing it every week now. I don't know. I might have peanut butter on my brain. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.